the Daytona 24 hours, it's twice around the clock with four drivers. Uh, usually you're doing races upwards of about two to three hours with only two drivers, which isn't so bad, but on a 24 hour race at a place like Daytona, this is a completely different race than we run anywhere else in the world. Racing is something that's fun and unique because when you see it live, it's a completely different view. You know, when you see it on TV, it's it's only it's only so exciting to see a bunch of cars go around in circles for 24 hours, right? Especially the Daytona 24 hours, is such a prestigious race. Daytona alone is is one of the, is a world famous racetrack, and so when you come to this race, the fans, the camaraderie, the atmosphere, uh, everything that leads up to the beginning of this race is, is something crazy. Rolex 24 is a unique race because you get guys from IndyCar, you get guys from motocross, you get guys from NASCAR, you get guys from sports cars, from Formula One, you get guys from all over the world of motorsports. And so this race is not only a big race for the Grand Am people, it's a good way to start off a year. If you can come into Daytona and win, it kind of sets the tone for your year. We had a little issue in the start of night practice. We had about four laps into night practice and and uh, no signs, no warnings, no nothing. And, and uh, my co-driver got over the radio and said we lost a motor. It was a brand new motor. It only had about, uh, about three hours into the motor. And uh, it was really unfortunate. Porsche Motorsports North America got us a new motor. So we were let in a little bit early around 6.30, 7 o'clock the next morning. We had a nine o'clock practice, so for about three hours the team thrashed and worked as hard as they could to put the new one in. We had a good qualifying yesterday. We had a good qualifying and then there was practice after that? Yeah. Is yeah. that what happened? Yeah. Okay. So we you know, decided to swallow a $75,000 motor. Ralph just called me and he said that there's a hole in the side of it. Yeah. They're just trying to finish up the motor. They're just putting it there. So hopefully we can get out before this practice is over. I think for me growing up as a kid, I, I grew up riding dirt bikes and stuff like that with my family. And it just ventured from the dirt to the pavement when I was about 13. My dad took me to a local short track here in Southern California, Irwindale Speedway. And uh, we saw these little legend cars. Me and my dad looked at the race and looked at the cars and said, hey, that's, there's some kids out there driving and, and uh, it doesn't look too hard, not doesn't look too expensive. But uh, you know, six or seven years later, it's bit me in the butt because it's, it's a lot harder than it looks and it's a lot more expensive than, than we thought. I've always been a motorsport fan ever since I was a little kid. Whether it was on road, two wheels, four wheels, motorsports in general was, was a love of mine. I had the eye, I looked at it and I said, I think I can really do this. And then once you're in, it just pulls you in. You know, motorsport's such an addicting sport that once you once you get grabbed into it and once you're you, you've done it once, you just want to keep going and going and going. I have no superstitions, I have no lucky underwear or anything like that or none of that stuff, but the time you're spent in the car, the G-loads that you're faced against, the heat that you're up against, preparation for races are, are huge in our sport. There's a lot of strategy that goes into racing. As soon as a green flag drops, all that strategy goes out the window, right? So before the races, you'll sit together as a team with your engineers, your crew chiefs, the owners, and the other drivers. You all sit together and you'll come up with a game plan. 
It's just like any other sport, you come up with your plays, your play calls, when you're gonna run the plays, and who you're putting in the car, and, and when do you push, and when do you just kind of stay consistent. But as racing goes, you know, it's so unpredictable out there. You have the elements of other cars, cautions, weather. You have all kinds of other elements that factor into that that you don't really have control over. So what we like to do as a team before all of our races is we like to make a game plan on all the things that we can control as a team and we can control as drivers. So I think that when you have that game plan, you're almost expected to follow that game plan to an extent, but you know in the back of your mind that it's gonna change at any moment of the race.